So, um, provisioning is one of those overly complicated topics. So I'm going to start by telling you what on earth I mean by provisioning, and then we'll talk a little bit about the details. Things like turning on the TPM, the endorsement key, and how you, you created it, how we provision TPM keys, and a little bit about certification. So, in short, what we mean by provisioning is getting the TPM ready to make use of. Uh, there are several steps to it, not all of which are required in every case, and we'll be going into a little bit about why in a moment. You need to make sure that the TPM is turned on, because they usually ship turned off. You need to make sure that the TPM actually has an endorsement key, which is that other root key we haven't talked about yet. You need to make sure it has an endorsement credential, which is the certificate for the endorsement key to make sure that we recognize that this is actually a TPM. Mm -hmm. um, you need to take ownership. As I said, that's what creates the storage root key, and so it's what allows us to actually use any other keys on the system. Um, we may, in some cases, want to create an initial set of keys. This is not a required part of provisioning, but in an awful lot of enterprise use cases, we might like to make sure that, say, every machine on our network has one identity key or at least one sign-in key and so forth. And we need to make sure that any keys we do create are certified so that we have some reason to trust them. Now, provisioning is critical. Provisioning is underappreciated. People tend to hand wave it and say, well, we know we're working with the TPM and. Well, the problem is, how do we know that what we're talking to is a TPM? Um, provisioning is, in my mind, and, and I will be clear here, this is not industry terms, this is Ariel's terms, um, how we establish our trust in the TPM itself. If we don't do provisioning right, it doesn't matter how well we do everything afterwards because we might not be talking to a TPM, we might be talking to some malware that is very good at pretending to be a TPM and is really running somewhere else. Provisioning matters. So, um, when we say we're talking to the TPM, there's some operations, like just reading the PCR generically, that are not really trusted operations. If it lies to us, we, we can't tell, we don't really care, it's not signed. Whenever we talk about knowing that we're talking to a TPM, it's because we have some key that is associated with the TPM. And the TPM is very good at certifying keys once it's got a root key. But the question is, how do we establish trust in the root key? This is where all of our security for provisioning is really concentrated in that one step of making sure we know what the root key is and that we, we can trust it. So once we've got that, the other provisioning steps are really less important. Because if it turns out that you know we haven't actually turned the TPM on, we denial of service to ourselves, this is not really a security <laughs> threat. It's annoying, but it's not a big deal. Um, if later on, if we're in a lower security scenario, well, maybe some low security operations can get forged. But anything that really matters, we've got trust in a root key. We can establish trust in all of the security critical operations. So other than this one step, there's very little we can do to lose trust in the TPM. But certifying that root key is really critical. 